going up against championship level fighters. WBO Asia Pacific Light Q title match. This fight's champion is WBO Asia Pacific Supervisor Yasuko Tsuyoshi, Japan Boxing Commission Matsubara Nobuhiro, Timekeeper Ito Naoto, Chief Timekeeper Takahashi Junichi. Commission Doctor is Nagayama Gota, and the Commission Doctor is Maruyama Fumiyaki. またこの試合を採点するリングサイドの3名のジャッジは桂木明彦同じくダンレックスタップダさん同じくジャッジ飯田哲也そしてこの試合をストップする唯一の権限を持つレフェリーは杉山敏夫。それでは、定期プロモーション、プライムビデオプレゼンス、ライブボクシング、アットウェイブランズボクシング、ザ・ WBO アジアパシフィック・ライトウェイトチャンピオンシップ、WBO アジアパシフィック・ライト級タイトルマッチ、12ラウンドを行います。まずは、赤コーナー、アマチュア戦績は124戦104勝、104勝のうち55勝をストップがし、プロ戦績は15戦全勝、全15勝のうち11勝がノックアウト。公式計量はライト級リミット135パウンド、三沢事務所副、現在のライト級における世界ランクは WBA 第15位、IBF 第13位、WBC 第11位、そして WBO 世界ライト級第9位、通算7度の防衛を果たした全日本ライト級チャンピオン。この試合が現在保持する2つの王座のうち1つをかけた防衛戦、いまだ無敗の OPBF 東洋太平洋ライト級、そして WBO アジアパシフィックライト級チャンピオン、吉野。そしてその肩書きや現在のランクよりもはるかに大きな世界的評価を得ているボクサーが青コーナーアマチュア戦績は30戦25勝25勝のうち7勝をストップ勝ちプロ戦績は22戦20勝敗戦は世界のビッグネームに喫した2敗のみそして20勝のうち14勝がノックアウト公式計量は134パウンド2分の1定権事務所区現在のランクは WBC 世界ライト級第10位また OPBF 東洋太平洋ライト級第1位連続11の防衛を果たした第46代の全 OPBF 東洋太平洋ライト級チャンピオン中谷俊タイトルマッチ12回戦、ルールを守り、反則のないようにお互いこの試合で最善尽くそう、最後ヨシノ和ナカタニ、スケジュールを12ラウンド、ヨシノが来ているのは WBO アジア・パシフィック・ライトウェイト・チャンピオンシップ、そしてオリエンタル・アンド・パシフィック・ボクシング・フェデレーション・ライトウェイト・チャンピオンシップ、彼は黒のトランクスと黒のトランクス。マスヨシナカタニ、ナンバー10のランキングを見ると、WBC は135パウンド、トラーファイターのトランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランクスを持っているのは、トランク
And then he bounced back to Nakatani in 2020 with the upset victory over Felix Verdejo. And the ninth round knockout of Verdejo and then losing to Vasily Lomachenko in 2021. But even that fight against Loma went to the ninth round. Yeah. He's an awkward fighter at this you know, weight class because of his height and his reach. Oh yeah, de definitely, definitely. And, and I mean, but um, just a, a moment ago, he got countered over with, with a lazy jab. And what I mean by that is he, he's throwing from the shoulders, and that that, that could be an issue for um, you know, for him if he's not if he if he's not smart. If um, Yoshino, Yoshino doesn't pick up on it at least, picks up on it at least because he's not protecting his chin when he throws his jab. He's just throwing it from the shoulder, and, and that's what that's how you can, you can easily see maybe an overhand right coming over that over time. We'll, we'll see if Yoshino can take advantage and exploit Thanks, yeah. that good jab there by Nakatani Yoshino. The 31 year old undefeated ranked in the top 15 by all four governing bodies at 135 pounds as high as number nine by the WBO. And you have to think this is where Yoshino wants to be. On the of course, uh, I, yeah, of course. You want to um, you want to close the gap. You want to, you know, close that distance with, using your jab. You can't just walk in because you're gonna if you just walk in with a, with a tall, rangy guy like Nakatani, you're gonna just get picked up with a jab all night. That's where he wants to be at. He wants to be, be getting his chest and also use lateral movement instead of just walking directly in. That's how he got caught coming directly in just now. A couple effective left hands by Yoshino before getting caught by Nakatani. Oh, Nakatani hey, with the big right uppercut splits the guard and now Nakatani on the attack with 10 seconds to go in the opening round and He found something, he found something with, that, with that body shot with that left hand to the body as well The left hook to the body from, from Nakatani Strong finish to round number one yes. for Masayoshi Nakatani One thing, Jamel, that we saw there at the end of that first round, that you go back to the fight that Nakatani had with Felix Verdejo in the upset victory. You know, he, I think, has pretty deceptively heavy hands. Yeah, and, and it, was a com it was some combinations like that yep. that, that, um, that really caught Verdejo off guard. And yep. Once he got him, he just couldn't recover, and we've seen how that fight ended. Nakatani was knocked down twice in that fight in the yeah. first and the fourth that came back scored two knockdowns in the ninth to end it he trailed on all three scorecards at the time of the knockout but that, but, but that's, his thing. that's his thing though like he'll get hurt and it's like when a wounded animal is a dangerous animal and then when he when he gets hurt and he gets put down a couple times you can't count him out unless you f completely take him out yeah because when he gets back up he you know he knows he has to, he has to play catch up so he you know he, he takes up to another notch and that's how he, that, that's how he scores those, those big impressive wins yeah and, and the same thing happened in the tfima lopez fight where you know it seemed like at times nakatani was out of it yeah and then all of a sudden you, you <laughs> reel off a combination like that and you realize how much punching power he has and it is a bit with those combinations with that punching power to get back into a fight is what's impressive absolutely a couple good body shots by Yoshino but that's where nice. he wants to be at. he wants to be right there and it has, if he had to make it ugly because if, if you look at it right now Nakatani's whole game he's trying he wants to box you know he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna try to make it an easy night and just cruise by just boxing and, and pumping that beautiful jazz that we see and it also you know look at oh he's got COVID uppercut even though he was trying to land his own uppercut but that's his whole thing right now. Um, you know, the jab, the right uppercut, and maybe occasionally the left, the left hook to the body. It's peppering with that jab, and and just using you, you utilizing the entire ring. He'll get it. He'll he'll get he'll get his combination off, and then he'll he'll move right afterwards. Whether it's one shot or two, he, he's he's never in the same spot. And so, Yoshino needs to start actually cutting that ring off, and also again keep pressing him. But he has to come in with his own jab, even if he uh, even if he wants, see, <laughs> can't leave it out there. Yeah, he can't leave it out there. The overhand right lands for Nakatani. Now Nakatani back into the corner. Yoshino trying to take advantage. Good combination yep. there. 
Oh, and that's what I mean by that leaving that lazy jab out there too long. It, it's going, Yoshina's going to come over with the overhand right hands. It's landed twice here in the last 30 seconds for Shuichiro Yoshino. So Yoshino noticing the same trend that Jamel Herring noticed with that lazy jab from Nakatani. Body shot, nice body shot from Yoshino. Oh, another oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hand, right hand by Yoshino. He can't, he, Nakatani can't afford to um, keep the, the jab out there. Left hook combination from Nakatani as he scores, storms back, and an overhand right of his own. Here they go. <laughs> and this is this, this, this what people don't really know that, like you were playing around earlier, Nakatani, he can brawl if he wants to. And it seems like when, he, when he's hurt or, get, or gets hit with something solid, he feels like he, he has to get some get back, and that's when you start seeing him let his hands go and he starts picking his shots up just as we see just a few, a few moments ago. Well, Nakatani now at both rounds one and two has excelled in the final 15 seconds <laughs> yeah. of the round after getting a few pops by Yoshino. I will say this, though. If Nakatani wants to kind of minimize getting hit with his overhand count, you see how he just drops the hand, his hand as he brings back? He also needs to start bending his bending his knees and get that eye level because he makes it an easy target when you're sitting straight up in the air and boom, just like that, you get hit with overhand, you get hit with overhands and he follows, he got followed up with a body shot afterwards. Nakatani is at least in the early parts of the first two rounds done a good job with the distance control, right. with the jab, and then he starts to slow down, gets a little lazy with yeah, the gets footwork, lazy. Exactly. and then Yoshino gets inside. Lazy and lackadaisical. Good fight so far. Now four very evenly matched, at least on paper, fights in this card tonight from Japan. Eric Rothman and Jamel Herring here with you. Fight number one of four. This one for the WBO Asia Pacific. It was a clash of heads Super there. lightweight championship belt and a clash of heads. And oh, that's a nasty cut under the left eye of Masayoshi Nakatani. Luckily, it's, on, it's, on, it's under the eye, though, instead of, uh, rather than being over the eye in his vision. You see the swelling there, too. Yeah, I think if anything, there's this swelling is what you have to look out for, from, um, you know, getting bigger and potentially closing up that eye. But even though it's a, it's a, it's a big gas, the, the cut shouldn't bother his vision. The fight prior to us coming on the air actually ended yeah, in a, a nasty cut. <laughs> cut by an inadvertent clash of heads. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. We've had a good fight going through two rounds and change between Nakatani and Yoshino. And, uh, you know, with that, with, you know, when, when, when you draw blood, I'll tell you right now, Nakatani's going to try his best, as you can see, just to box to keep his distance because he got caught like that with a clash of heads from, you know, from the inside, uh, uh, obviously. Yoshino now has a target to go after yeah. under that left eye. And it should also be noted that the right eye, the right orbital bone of Masayoshi Nakatani has been an issue over the past few years. He broke that right orbital bone against Tiafimo Lopez and Felix Verdejo. A good straight right by Yoshino. So and again, it's from that, it's from that lazy jab coming from, from the shoulders. And then when he throws the jab, it goes right down to his waist. I mean, he's doing a good, great, great job so far, but over time, when, you know, when these rounds go further and you start to wear, get some wear and tear and fatigue, you know, that jab may get a little heavier and it maybe gets slower and that, and that gives opportunities for Yoshino to really start, you know, countering and following things up. Right. If it's lazy when you're fresh, we don't want yeah, to see exactly, how lazy yeah. it's going to be when you're tired. For the fighters, you know, like Nakatani, Jamel, when you get a gash like that, does it change your mindset? Does it change the strategy at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, even when you're the one that, that's, um, that's bleeding, 
you have to go into another gear at times because you never know what the referees are looking for, and you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be stopped, you know, on cut. So you, you know, on the other flip side, when you when your opponent sees blood, you know, you want to go in for the kill. It's like it's like it's like a shark that smells blood. You know, you want you want to go for it now. Nakatani comes underneath with the right hand. 40 seconds to go here in round number three. And now it looked like Yoshino got caught with a head clash right around the jawline. Yoshino's issue with me right now was that again, you know, he should he, he's not he's not rotating and, and he's allowing he's allowing Nakatani to just to pepper him with his that jab. He, he, again, he's, that's three four jabs in a row. Yoshino, Javel, and you're letting Nakatani stand at that distance and pepper you with the jab. It's a very easy way to allow Nakatani to still make rounds. rounds. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, if anything, since Nakatani is standing so um, tall up, Yoshino should actually start trying just to bend a little bit more to make him come down. Because you know Nakatani's going to throw a lazy jab. So you, when you start to bend and you can try to make him punch downward on you, that's when you can come up with, with, with more of those overhands and probably follow up with a left hook afterwards. But he's just making it easy by just standing. He's, he's also standing straight up as well, and he's just moving in a straight line. So Nakatani just throwing it at the shoulders where his where, where his where um, Yoshina's head is at and just easily scoring. You see the cut being worked on under the left eye of Nakatani. Swelling doesn't seem too bad. I believe that's my good friend Rudy yeah. Hernandez in there in the corner working on um, Nakatani. So big shout out to Rudy Hernandez. <laughs> Rudy getting it done. Round number four. Oh, good jab, good jab. Yoshino Yoshino. fires back a jab of his own. Haven't seen a ton of jabs land for Yoshino in this fight so far. Now Yoshino, he, he has the right, he has the right idea. Keep keep forcing him Nakatani backwards to the ropes. That's when you want to get mad. Because Nakatani is, is do is really he's doing a great job boxing and using the side of the ring. So what you, what, he, what Yoshino needs to do is keep backing him up. But he needs to also start cutting up the ring. Right now he's letting the Nakatani just just box in circles, literally just boxing in the circle. And then smart move on Nakatani right there. Just when he gets when he feels like Yoshino's getting too close, tie him up. Let the referee um, break it up to reset, and he'll go right back to boxing, as you see now. There's been some good adjustments by Nakatani after Yoshino landed a couple good combinations in rounds one and two. And now here comes Yoshino on the offensive, catching Nakatani bouncing off the ropes. Yeah. I believe he got a warning for holding. Nice jab for most, for most part. It's a good, good jab for Nakatani, and he's making the fight easier. He's not a, oh, with a fight with a nice, with a beautiful uppercut afterwards, but he's making the fight a lot easier and not ex exerting so much energy by just pumping out a jab. Yeah, Nakatani just missed with that uppercut. And it's the same thing that you know my um, my manager and close friend Jerry used to always tell me. Um, you know, I used to always pepper opponents with a, with a with a jab, change it up at times, and then I used to sneak in the uppercut. And that's what the same thing that Nakatani is doing now. He's he'll blind you with the jab enough, and then he'll follow it up with something big like the uppercut. Overhand right from yeah. Nakatani after Yoshino landed the left coming out of the clinch. This is where Yoshino wants to be. He wants to have Nakatani in the corner. Defensive work by Ooh, Nakatani good yeah. goes down to the body with the left. That's the thing. You, you can't just think that, you know, he, when you get on the inside that you, you got him because Nakatani can't fight on the inside. He just probably prefers to make it easier on him by just keeping on the distance. Good. And nice to see him actually get out the way of, of that looping hook. The overhand right of Yoshino was the weapon of choice in those first two rounds. Hasn't been able to find it here recently as Nakatani peppers him with a combination. 20 seconds to go here in round place. number four. And found that sneaker. Now, and now, you know, now Nakatani is just changing it up. He's adding, he's adding a lot of tools to his arsenal.
good action through four rounds. Good to see that the swelling has been kept down. Like you pointed out, just that jab. The jab's been the key. He's just jabbing kind of distance. Licking it out. Yeah, he's not, yeah, he's not putting anything hard on because he's because again, he's using it as a measuring stick. So he's, he's just, you know, keeping the distance, boom. And every time he feels that when Yoshino gets in a little closer, you'll side speed him throw, like you pointed out, that oh, his overhand right a bit, or he'll sneak in that uppercut. And I have to imagine, too, if you're Yoshino and you keep getting hit with that jab and you're not able to get on the inside over the course of a fight, it's got to become frustrating. Oh, yeah, but you got you to change your, your, um, your rhythm and pace. you got to start throwing some feints. you got to make um, Nakatani bite. If you, know he's gonna, if you know he's throwing that jab, but the jab is lazy, start throwing some feints and then come then, and then get the opportunity to counter. But you, you're making it easy by just walking to him, as you see right now, just walking directly to him. He, and right now, he's not doing anything. And you, like the guy is 5'11". <laughs> you know? Yeah, you already have the height on you and the reach. You can't just walk in on him. You gotta, you gotta start. You gotta box your way in. Overhand right lands for Yoshino. Another one comes behind it. That's where he wants to be at. But he has to bend at the, he has to bend at the waist and get under, get under um, Nakatani's elbows. Good uppercut on the inside by Yoshino. Oh, good by shot. From Nakatani into the body. <laughs> and there he goes. But yeah, there you want to back him up. This is good action so far. This is probably the, the best we've seen so far of Yo from Yoshino. But again, Nakatani, he, he, hey, he's the, ooh, nice uppercut from, from Nakatani. And Nakatani shot. throwing about 10 to 1 in terms of punch ratio here in this fifth round. It's heating up. But this is where Yo, this is where I, even though Yoshino's getting hit with some big punches, this is where he, I'm pretty sure he would rather, rather be. Because when you get just getting peppered from a jab and you can't get in, that's very frustrating. So I, I'm pretty sure he'd rather take some to get some at least. And now Yoshino looks a bit tired. Nakatani landed a left to the body that came back with a right hook that oh. came around the guard. Yoshino scores there and bounces Nakatani off the ropes once more. And then Nakatani go back to just the jab. Pat, pat. He's going to sneak something behind it. Yep, good, good shot. Good shot from Yoshino. Sharp with the left hand. But if, if, he, if he watches, if he, he needs to watch out, though, because um, from what I'm looking at, you can clearly tell that Nakatani is just trying to set something up. Because like you put out earlier, it's not, it's, not, it's not a hard jab. It's, it's more of a range finder. And to set something up, to set traps up, and the way Yoshino is, um, you know, in position, he's a bit squared up at times. He could potentially jump into a big uppercut if um, Nakatani times it correctly. Right now, this is where he wants to be at, though. Nakatani bobbing and weaving, Yoshino all over him. Tough to tell how many of these are landing, but boy, he's throwing a lot here under th 35 seconds to go in round number five. But you can tell the, the, the experience factor plays a part. Um, Nakatani just played it real cool. Kama collective even on, the, even on the ropes. I say he needs to start moving his head though, because now he's getting hit with straight shots because he's keeping his head on the line. Yoshino's still searching for that big overhand right. Oh, there's a short overhand right that scores. Oh, comes back yeah. with the left hand. Good round for Yoshino. Maybe oh, the best oh. of the fight, and now Nakatani goes down. Nakatani takes a knee towards the end of round number five. The strongest round so far for Shuichiro Yoshino. And I can tell you turn around this fight now. I had, I had him down honestly every round up until that knockdown. What do we see here, Jamel? You know, Nakatani made a mistake by pressing, by putting himself in danger in the corner like that. And, you know, I like how Yoshino was just weaving and he wasn't, yeah, like, he, you know, he, he was keeping Nakatani guessing and then bam, when he came back up, came back with a big right hand. As Nakatani was trying to exit. But that's the mistake that Mike Nakatani makes by, um, by not having any upper body movement. You know, it, no matter what you throw at him, he's going to be on the line and it's, it's going to be right there. So 
Nakatani doesn't he doesn't you know make it hard for his opponents at times to get to him also when he just stands when he just stands in a straight line and no upper body no. Well, it seemed like the first four rounds that Nakatani was dictating the distance and the pace and the rhythm of the fight and then big fifth round for Yoshino scoring the knockdown we'll see if he can capitalize it on him here in the sixth but again like you pointed out earlier you know Nakatani's been knocked down plenty of times yep. in his career and then when he gets back up at times he gets stronger and I, I like how he's using the, he's actually throwing combinations he's using that the uppercut the looping right hand you know <laughs> he's mad great exchange to start the sixth but again, he's keeping his head on the line. Yoshino's answering, though, with yeah. the left hand. Because Nakatani's keeping his head on the line. He's not going from offense to defense. Right now, it's just all offense. He's wailing. He's trying to get some get back. He's also opening himself up for Yoshino. Now who lands a short right hand back with the straight left. Exactly. And, and, and Yoshino's pay, he's pretty much what Yoshino's doing right now is he's catching and going, meaning he's catching the uh, um, Nakatani's offensive on the on the on the gloves and so on and so as he feels the, the, the uh, punch he counters back and you see right now boom. and now Nakatani again. goes down again after the combination from Yoshino Nakatani down for the second straight round he seems tired he seems fatigued seemed like he was trying to get it all back to start the sixth round oh. and they stopped the fight with 145 to go in the sixth. Shuichiro Yoshino. A knockout victory against Masayoshi Nakatani. And the road to America. <laughs> he paved with gold for Yoshino. That was impressive. Who overcame a slow start in the first few rounds to wallop Knock Katani at the end of the fifth and then close it out midway through the sixth. Title match, Jury Round. Referee Sugiyama Toshio ga kiken no ishi hyoji o ukeire da time wa rok round Third loss in the last five fights for Knock Katani. That's pretty impressive. Back to back wins for Yoshino. The win in April against Masayuki Ito, and then winning here tonight against Masayoshi Nakatani. Against formidable opponents, you know. So that, that's, that, that, is, that is impressive. Yoshino retains his WBO Asia Pacific Championship belt. Disappointing finish for Nakatani. Seemed like he had a really good game plan. Was executing for those first few rounds. Yeah. And then you, you mentioned it that Nakatani doesn't like to be coming from behind and doesn't like to allow his opponents to get momentum but that opens him up exactly